Welcome to Hey Jude, What's Cooking? This is a BATV presentation and today we're going to make an orzo salad. Essentially orzo looks like rice but it's really pasta and it cooks like rice in this situation. We're going to steam it and we're going to saute it first to give it a nutty sort of brown browning and then what we'll do is we will make a tomato and basil salad to go around the orzo and we'll top it off with a little bit of goat cheese. So. Um, Without further ado, let me just start my pan and I will get the finished product for you to look at. So this is what the orzo basil and tomato and goat cheese salad looks like. Basically there's orzo on the bottom, the tomato and basil salad is around the outside, and then the goat cheese is on top. Normally this is served at room temperature. If you want to serve it as soon as the orzo is done, you can do so and you'll have the cold salad, you'll have a warm orzo, and then the goat cheese will actually melt a little bit, which is sort of a nice thing to serve. Or you could serve it the way I do, which is at room temperature or cool. So basically the first thing I have to do is my orzo which takes the longest. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of olive oil in the pan. I'm on high and a half an onion and I'm going to just go ahead chop this up a little bit. You don't need a lot of stuff in this just because it's not a lot of orzo. Now if you wanted to make this non-vegan you could use butter as well as olive oil but I'm just making a vegan version, except I wouldn't add the goat cheese for the vegan version. I would add my tofu cheese. Um, also with this, you want to salt liberally. And I've also used a low sodium broth. It's a mock chicken broth, but it's a vegetarian broth. There is no chicken in it, but it tastes like chicken, which is kind of nice. I'm going to smash some garlic. And I'll use a little bit of this garlic in my orzo and the rest of the garlic will actually be used in the tomato salad. So when you're mincing you just want to scrape down, bring it back together. And once again I'm just going to use half of this in here and the other half I'll put for my tomato salad. And my tomato salad is really simple. It's just tomato, basil, olive oil, salt and pepper, tiny bit of garlic. So let's move this around. Start browning the onions, getting the aromatics going a little bit. And go ahead and start cutting the tomatoes. Let's take the ends off. The orzo usually takes 10 to 15 minutes to cook. So you want to give yourself some time. And I'm look, keeping an eye on my onions. I don't want them to burn. I've got them on high so they're going to go very quickly. I also don't want my garlic to get too hot. So now I'm going to turn it down a little bit, more of a medium high, and then add my orzo. And now the fun comes because we're, you get to brown the orzo and to get it very nutty. Now caution when you're browning orzo. This is pasta, it's not a grain. So you can really burn the orzo and you want to make sure that you don't do that and you don't over brown it because it'll render the orzo very tough and hard to chew. So while that's working, I'm going to just finish up my tomato salad. So tomatoes are not really in season right now. This is the middle of the winter. So this, all of this basil and olive oil mask the fact that they're not as juicy and sweet as they could be. Now if you look very closely, you'll start to see a little bit of browning going on with the orzo. And I just want a little bit of nuttiness and flavor in this. I don't want it overly browned. But this just gives it a great flavor, great nuttiness sort of an earthiness to it.
And when we, saw, when we simmer this, we're going to simmer this on low. So if you are using an electric burner like I am, the burner will not go to low as quickly as you might want it. So when we add the broth and put on our cover, um, we'll take it off the heat to let the burner sort of catch up and lower itself. I think gas is a little bit easier to regulate that way. Okay, so I've pretty much browned it. I mean, it's not completely browned. It's sort of like a rice uh, vermicelli or rice pilaf, just a little bit browned. So what you want to do when you add your broth is make sure that you've got your, your cover available so that we can just go in and then cover because we want to trap the steam. So we're going to go in quickly and cover, bring it down to a low, get it off the heat for a couple seconds if it is an electric, and then bring it back on so that it doesn't continue to boil vigorously. So I'm going to give that a second. Meanwhile, I'm going to start on my basil. Um, what we're going to do is just a simple basil chiffonade. So I'm going to pick through some really good leaves, um, big fat leaves. If they're a tiny bit brown, you want to sort of discard them. Um, try to just get good green leaves. Um, let's see, here we go. And I'd say you could use about 10 to 12 leaves. And stack them on top of each other. I'm going to put this back on so it can continue to cook. And I will start my chiffonade. Once you stack these leaves stem to tip, you want to roll them very, very, very uh, firmly like this and then hold on to it while you cut it. And this is called a chiffonade. It's really nice little ribbons of basil. And it increases the surface area. It looks really pretty. It doesn't bruise the basil as it would if you were to just simply chop it. If you don't have fresh basil, you can always use basil oil or a little pesto with olive oil. So I'm going to throw that in. And then I'm going to throw in a generous amount of salt, pepper, and crushed red pepper. And let me move this a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to that salad. Just about a tablespoon, not too much. And then I also want to add some scallions to this, just to give it a little more oomph, a little more kick. So I'm going to take about three scallions. I've already washed these, and I've picked off the really bad um, pieces that were attached. You always want to sort of clean them off a little bit. Also, I always cut the very ends off. So with regard to doing this, you want to just take these little beard ends off. And then you can go ahead and stack them. And then using a rocking motion, you just go back and forth until you just cut them. And keep your fingers behind you. Always keep them in a claw shape and walk your fingers back a little bit. Okay. And that's the last of it. Gather on your knife. Okay, and I can just Stir that a little bit. Just mix this really gently. You don't want to juice the tomatoes too much. Just want to get those seasonings around the salad. Also, you want to taste it. Make sure there's enough salt, pepper. Mmm, very good. Garlic comes through. It's not overbearing because I only used two small cloves. Um, this one will actually take about seven more minutes to, um, to finish. So in the meantime, I want to talk to you about orzo, because this is just one way to make orzo. 
Oftentimes orzo is thrown in just as a noodle would be into soup. But what I like to do is I like to use it almost like a risotto and cook it in water until it's actually fully cooked and then add it with uh, either a saffron broth or a veggie broth and vegetables and let it become creamier and break down as if it were like a risotto. So orzo can be substituted for any type of rice, arborio rice or grain or any type of pasta. The thing that you've got to remember is it's tiny, tiny, tiny. So you wouldn't use it for anything structural. For example, if you had a very, very heavy sauce, you wouldn't ask orzo to hold up spaghetti and meatballs and a sauce like that. But you could certainly uh, be very delicate with, with it and use a cream sauce or olive oil garlic prep or even just toss it, like with a pasta salad, with a balsamic vinaigrette or any type of vinaigrette and chill the orzo because it really holds its the flavor in and it holds basically sauces very, very well. Um, how do you know when the orzo is done in this method? Two things. One, you're going to look for the absence of the water, which means that the orzo has steamed. It's actually absorbed all of the water. In our case, it's stock. The other thing, so I won't see as much steam around the periphery. The other thing is I'm going to try to taste it and see if it's al dente. The third thing is when you flake it with a fork, it'll appear a, a little bit, um, what is the word? It's very soft. So I think we can maybe take a look at this and it looks pretty good. If you notice, you'll start to see actually steam holes in the orzo, which is exactly what it's doing. It's steaming. So this is perfect. This is exactly, you want to fluff it up a little bit with a fork, but this is the sort of the creamy, wonderful pasta like um, thing that it, it's very much like a grain but it is a pasta so I'm going to just test it make sure that it's completely cooked through and al dente mm-hmm perfect I like to not overcook orzo because I find that when I overcook it unless I'm doing a mushy preparation where I specifically want mushy um, I can sort of keep it for days and use it in a variety of ways if I don't overcook it. I can take this salad and then throw it into a soup or throw it into something else and it really keeps well. So this is essentially done. Let me show you how to uh, put this all together. So first thing I'm going to do is grab a plate and I will take my orzo off the heat. And what I want to do is I just want to put the orzo in a mound in the center of the plate. Now once again, you can serve this hot, cold, room temperature, any way you like it. For this dish, it's okay to serve the cold salad around the, the warm orzo. But if you prefer, you can wait till it all cools and serve it. When I make this for my family, they like the hot orzo because then they have the melty goat cheese around it. And that's kind of nice. Once again, if you're vegan, goat cheese is not what you have to go for. You can go for any, anything else to add to it. Okay, so that's pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is put on my salad around the periphery. I really like combining things that are different textures and also different temperatures. I think it's kind of fun to eat cold and hot together. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add the goat cheese. I'm just going to crumble that all the way around. And you can add as much or as little as you want. I recommend about a quarter cup, about two ounces worth of goat cheese. 
But if you love it, you can add more. If you can't stand it, don't add it at all. Or substitute. Add some, add a nut cheese or add a tofu cheese or add something else that you find interesting. You could even just add nuts for, for texture. But essentially that's it. That's our orzo basil tomato and goat cheese salad. Um, thank you for coming to Hey Jude, What's Cooking?